001. We're in the most active uh, earthquake area of, of Canada. There is evidence of earthquake activity along the rocky shoreline off Stevenson Point in Nanaimo. I'm going to take you to see a bedrock fault here that's within some sandstone and conglomerates, an old, we would say probably an old inactive fault. Every so many months, we get a newspaper headline that blasts us with dire warnings of a big one, a major earthquake that's going to hit the Pacific coast sometime in the future. In fact, seismologists with the Geological Survey of Canada record a thousand earthquakes each year off western Canada. And if you want to, you can see the shaking happen in real time. The question is always when. Um, we can come up with probabilities of when these earthquakes might occur, but in terms of prediction, accurate prediction, you know, we, we're not able to do that. Geoscientists cannot do that. I think people should have a, at least an understanding of the processes involved in how you know, an earthquake is related to a fault, a buildup of stresses, release of stresses, understanding that it's natural and that it's going to happen, so not being, not being fearful of the event and trying to put it in perspective. We have a conglomerate in the, in the back wall there. We have a, what we would call a sandstone, a calcareous sandstone. And right next to Andreas, he's standing on what I would consider probably the end of the fault zone. And coming, if you come towards me a little bit, you're actually standing right on the fault. And the end there where Andreas there probably I'd try and be able to match it back to where you're standing. As geoscientists, we can provide some information about how the Earth crust is moving. And any time the Earth crust moves, we create faults. And those faults in the, in the bedrock generate earthquakes. The west coast of Canada is one of the few places in the world where three types of plate movements occur. Well, one would be what we call a subduction zone, one plate going underneath another. And we would, the one off our west coast is called the Cascadia subduction zone. And that extends from the north of the island down to almost uh, past o Oregon, Washington, almost down to California. We also have a place where the crust is moving apart, uh, called a, a, spreading, a spreading ridge. And the Juan de Fuca plate is spreading apart from the Pacific plate. The third one was the strike slip motion, which is kind of a side-by-side -side motion from uh, example is the Queen Charlotte Faults, which is to the north of Vancouver Island. Each type of tectonic shift will cause an earthquake. A lot to do with the size or the magnitude of earthquakes is related to the, the, the length and the width and the amount of displacement along a fault. The ground, you know, the won't, won't split open, you won't have large openings. You might get rupture zones in places, but primarily going to be shaking. The faults that caused the displacement of the rock here on the beach in Nanaimo likely happened 40 or 50 million years ago. So this would be like this. So we'd call this probably a thrust fault where the rock has come up. As geoscientists what we can do is put it in perspective for people so that they're not um, paranoid about a you know a big earthquake happening. It will happen but it's you know whether it happens in our lifetime or in our children's lifetime or, or their children's lifetime. We don't know. If you want to help the researchers understand what's happening beneath our feet, they want you to report if you felt an earthquake. And you can do that on the Natural Resources Canada website. In Nanaimo, I'm Annette Lucas. On April 25th, an estimated 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck Nepal near the capital of Kathmandu. Thousands of people died and the region is in desperate need of food, water and medical support. Efforts are currently underway to limit further loss of life.